Oh, just got we're off another more, call. We're seeing more and more of each other these days. <laughs> I know. I love it. It's I do making too. up for lost time. <laughs> I know, right? I feel like those years went by and yeah, that's great. So um, so hopefully it's on the Facebook Live. It looks like it is, I think. And so um, yeah, so for today's recruiter round table, <laughs> mm -hmm. we have no plan for today. We've been so busy. <laughs> we, uh, we usually had like a few few minute discussions, but I think after our client calls we had this morning, we got off in a little riff, right? Mm -hmm. And then we can kind of continue on, I guess, as far as the intention of the call or if I think what to help, you know, help people the most, I guess it is, you know, we all run into problems um, with finding a better career, right? There's all these, like we talked about lack of confidence, different things we've talked about at length um, or starting your business. It's still the same things. So maybe we can just chat out loud about, you know, what we've seen in helping other women, because you're, you've been with training this week with me too, and helping women start businesses, landing their first retained client, you know what I mean? And then you've been with me on my client calls of, um, you know, people that are super successful in their career, made millions yeah. looking for something next. And they, we see that lack of confidence sometimes they don't realize what they've done. Right. So there's so I know there's so much there, so maybe I'll, I'll help let you help me structure how to focus that. But well, you know, after we talked, um, I thought, okay, what do how, how what do I want to structure for today's call? So the next thing I did was Google leading with heart, mm -hmm. <laughs> and then it brought me it and it brought me to a book of leading with heart. It's by John Baird and Edward Sullivan. It's the five conversations that unlock creativity, purpose, and results. Hmm. And it's really about, I mean, leading with your heart. We talked about it, like some mm -hmm. things, they just draw you, some things you kind of put out there in the world, some things you're kind of taking a moment of silence and thinking about it, trying to reposition it and restructure it and figure out how you want to move forward with it. And that's what comes down to business because you can't really sell yourself if you don't like lead with what you love, you know? Um, and so this was kind of like some questions and things like to think about your purpose and, um, you know, being aware of yourself and aware of other people's needs. Because um, mm -hmm. you told me that little story of just somebody like having an issue and then really figuring out what's that issue and how can we solution that issue so that this individual could move forward in their business plan ultimately, you mm -hmm. know? So, and I think that's like, even for myself, as I'm kind of trying to figure out, you know, what are the things that I want to lead with in my service to someone else? And I had to narrow it down to something as simple as a resume writing, you know, it mm -hmm. doesn't have to be huge. Like, oh, I'm going to start this oh, business. I'm going to call it something. I'm going to, you know, have all these different service offerings that I do and, and make it super large. Sometimes you just have to start with something very small and then slowly build on that. And I love like your ramp up and some you talk about in Facebook groups and you post out there is that you're not doing a get rich quick scheme of any kind. You're doing something that's going to build slowly and it's really going to actually develop into making money but it's mm -hmm. not going to be like overnight you know mm -hmm. yeah no those are all great points i think especially you touched on that like it's not get rich quick it's get wealthy slow <laughs> right it's yes. like it's a lot of women because you know at the same time when they i know whether you're looking for a new career or starting your own business you need to have that 30 60 90 day plan right i mean mm -hmm. ever sells a recruiter or even People jumping in new jobs, if they were getting hot in the interview and it was down to them and other candidates, one of my tricks, I know you know, you know this too, is put a 30, 60, 90 day plan together to present to the hiring manager your final interview. Not all candidates do that unless they're coached to do that. Right. And man, it's a you close that deal because you put all that thought, even before even getting the job, of how am I to go in and, and grow the business? So if they're in sales, especially, right? So it right. So back to like it's not get rich quick, it's get wealthy slow, but the 30, 60, 90, you need a fast action plan to get going. You need cash sometimes, right? Yeah. And you've seen this, and that's kind of brought it down to how you want to help someone. Okay, you want them to need another a better career to make tens of thousands more dollars, but it comes down to their resume, step one, right? And yeah. so how do you value add as a recruiter? We've done this for years for free in a way. We've now monetized it more that we're on the career side. And it's amazing, you know, for me to see you and other recruiters grow the minds of what that value is, because you don't know how valuable your knowledge is, right? So I think I brought this up before, but it's worth saying again, I think I asked you as well as maybe three or four other recruiters, 
what do you think it would be to, you know, fix my client's resume for him? And you also just stayed down here, remember your number, but it was like I, 20, what was the number? It was $25. <laughs> well, exactly. <laughs> but you weren't the only one, three other women I asked that. And it was interesting. I'm like, huh, I'm like, all right, well, that sounds fair. And I know you've got it poor, but let me give you $50. And here's my client, do their resume. And then very quickly, what did the 50 go to, right? I went to a hundred, but then really soon after that, it went up to 300 and all the way up to 500. Yes. And then from there for fast cash, even like you did, right. Um, from seeing how other, other ways we can help you more past the resume and utilizing that resume, then mm -hmm. it went to the thousands, right. Started out thinking what, with, um, do you remember the numbers from what thousand to what thousand? 1,000 to 3,000 to 5,000 right. to well, right. 10,000. Right. Then we're right. <laughs> exactly. get there. Right. Month, oh yeah. Month three, right. Month one is a 3,000. Month two gets you to mm -hmm. six and then three. Yeah. So, yep. but it's fascinating to me that I'm just going over the exercise to show other women that you can transform that mindset so quick, pick mm -hmm. up your value, get fast cash quickly as a recruiter, learning, coaching, or starting your business. You just need that action plan. Um, that 30, 60, 90, I'm always going back to. And um, yeah, so it's an important part. I think what we're talking about, like understanding your purpose and um, how you go get that and starting with the heart, because how do you even sell that right. if you're not real clear on how you can help serve them, right? Mm -hmm. Absolutely. So it's like, uh, like this leading with your heart book. It's like, what do you need to be your best? Well, hmm. When like this, this is, I'm just going to read some of the things that it yeah. says here. It's like when a house plant wilts, we don't yell at it. <laughs> um, we don't offer it more money. We put, we don't put it on a performance plan. Uh, we give it water, right? So we move it closer to the sun and we make sure it's getting the nutrients it needs until the leaves perk up and regain the color. Um, and that's the same that goes with people. So mm -hmm. sometimes like that first thing is, all right, well, what really drives you? What are, what are we lacking? Because, you know, as I transitioned from one role to another, you know, I felt like I wilted, mm, you know, I really yeah. wilted. And then, you know, I came to you and we started talking and then I felt like I got a little bit more watered and then I started to spruce up a little bit. And then I started to think, okay, well, I, I am I do know what I'm doing. I, mm -hmm. I love, first of all, I love to recruit. I absolutely adore people and I mm -hmm. want them to be at their best. And I want them to find some place where they can thrive and excel and put themselves into something that they just love and that they can, you know, grow in it. And, you know, to the point of one of our clients this morning, I mean, I, like I said, I, I kind of gathered that there was maybe some confidence that was like, maybe kind of down in the dumps a little bit. I'm like forgetting like what all you do and all that you have done. That's why your resume is so important because it's, it's your autobiography. Mm -hmm. It's your steps, your path, your journey that you've been on. Look back at it. Let's structure it. So it's telling the story what you've done it doesn't have to be you know super long and super in depth but it's just like your your catch points of things that you've done as you step through your career to where you are today and why you know I say why we have met and are talking at this very moment right um the other one is you know which fears are holding you back because mm. yes when we first started doing these I was like I'm scared. I'm a little, I'm fearful. <laughs> I don't know if people are going to like what I'm doing. Like even my first resume writing one, I'm like, well, I don't, I hope that they like it. And you're mm -hmm. like, oh, they're going to like it. Don't stop. You know, <laughs> and mm -hmm. I was like, yep. just, then there was that confidence reassurance again from somebody like a mentor, somebody who wants to help and advise you. And then, you know, it's, it's helping to kind of remove that fear from your blockage point, you know, cause it's always mm -hmm. like the, you, you set your own boundaries and some are good and some aren't ne even needed to be there. And fear is one of those those boundaries that you're like, you got to get over that a little bit. You can't, that cannot be your driver, though fear is still going to be there because you want to be doing your best. Mm -hmm. But, you know, you got to think about what are those fears? You know, what's so challenge, what's challenging me? And how can I, you know, change that, you know, and embrace a new order from it? And, you know, it's, it takes compassion and curiosity for that fear, you know, to be removed from your first line of defense. Mm -hmm. <laughs> yeah, no, you talked about a lot of good things there. I think um, fear, we all struggle with it, right? And so, but once you know that fear is normal, it's okay to be afraid and you just do it afraid. Like uh, there was a recent mm -hmm. post like that, you're just going to mm -hmm. do it afraid. But then even better, it's so much easier to do things afraid if you have someone else there with you. Yes. Because <laughs> I was kind of scared to do Facebook Live too. I'm not very familiar with Facebook. And I'm like, oh my gosh, is this going to like, I have a great career on LinkedIn where I'm very mm -hmm. professional. I wouldn't be dressed like this, you know, if I was doing mm -hmm. an interview at the C-suite. So 
yeah, I had this fear, but like, you know what? This is my life. This is part of my life. I'm growing. And, and then pulling you in to do it with me was like, oh, that solved that problem. There's no fear because I'm just <laughs> looking at you. So it feels right. like a conversation. It's not me by myself, you know, and it's very um, off the cuff, which I prefer to structure, right? Mm-hmm. Um, yes, yeah, so that's a really big one, I think, for people to know they don't have to go it alone. Therefore, you don't have to be as afraid because you're going to have someone that's got your back that's been there before. That's what recruiters do or coaches, right? Mm-hmm. Um, but I love to talk about what you said about the environment. I remember reading books like that, too, not that book, but other ones talking about the same thing, a plant or a tree, don't blame the tree. It obviously, you need to pick it up and either move it, transplant it. Maybe it's not getting enough water or sunlight. But give it more sun, it's going to be fine. We can just in our own backyard and gardening, right? Um, or like you said, more water, or it just needs to be in a completely, or it's outgrown its little pot. I always think right. about when everything gets get painful for me, I need a change. It's like, maybe I've outgrown the little pot I'm in. And so sometimes pruning or transplanting can be painful because you're making, you're like changing. Right. But when all that pruning or changing a bigger pot goes, then you can like totally expand again and to full bloom. Right. And mm-hmm. so, and I think the secret, I know you and I have talked about this too. I think for all of you women and men listening to us, we, that's something I want to touch on too, about women versus men and have more women raise their hand because men go for it fast. Right. Right. It's just, um, well, and talking about that, I totally lost my train of thought. <laughs> but uh, let me let me stick to that because actually the whole thing about um, women raising their hand and women putting themselves in an environment to get the attention they need, like if they want to be a recruiter to reach out to someone like us, or if they want to start a coaching business, right? So many women won't raise their hand for help. They go it alone more than men. Men, this is maybe my personal opinion or my experience, but they go after what they want, right? They've done this, they're used to this in work life. And so I find it fascinating as much as we're doing these like recruiter round tables and it's in our happening housewives group mm-hmm. who reaches out typically always first are men. We get men that come into our group at first it's by accident. Now I'm letting them in, right? Mm-hmm. <laughs> Most of our clients are still men. We target women, but usually it's still men, right? Mm-hmm. So there's something there too. I want to put out there in this whole to- you know, topic of um, finding your purpose and going after and having a confidence that that belief in yourself is like, again, so key. If you can't, you know, at least, find the courage to like raise your hand or ask for help or take the free gifts. Like we offer free gifts when we're offering support to people. Right. And right. so um, we do this in our free help head on housewives group that we're, you know, broadcasting this in, but there's free nuggets and free gifts and in, in every phone call with someone. Like I, we do free introductory calls that first call before they decide to work with us and look at our fees and what it costs and, and they'll see how they get that ROI on it. Right. We kind of prove that. But that first call is free. And yeah, yeah, if you know the right questions to ask, the 20 minutes with a specialist, like a recruiter like you or I, or anyone like you're working with, if you have the right questions, you can get, like, gather so much knowledge and it's so valuable. And, um, and then, of course, there's so much free knowledge out there. But then if you can have someone to help you apply it, like back to that weekly 30, 60, 90, so you're actually doing the actions, like the action is the key. Um, but and most people are just afraid to almost get started. Like it's in your mind, it might be in your notebook, but did you do that action, right? Did you right. get on the lot, even though you were scared? Did you hop on that call with the C-suite, you know, person you never done that before, you did it scared and now it feels like natural, right? Mm-hmm. And so, and I throw you at the deep end all the time. So I love it. Like sink or swim, you always swim. Like yesterday, I'm like, okay, I need another trainer to help me with more of my recruiters. Can you just train on this? And you get it right in there and you share screen and you write in real time, show them not just tell them how to do it, but show up and show them yes. in real time how to do it. Like the other client we had with um, LinkedIn showing, okay, you're looking for a job. Mm-hmm. Let's show you how a recruiter would hunt for a job, right? Right. Well, and he asked too, he was like, well, all right, you want me to do this because I have homework to do, which I didn't do yet, but I don't even know how to look <laughs> in here to find what I'm looking for to show you what I want. And then, you know, I, that's what I did. I shared my screen and I said, okay, well, here's your jobs tab up here at the top. Here's what I would put in. Here's location. And then there's the different drop downs you can choose from. But I like to stay broad. But mm-hmm. that just like even helped him. And then not only that, but it helped me then kind of think from that conversation talking with him. I then went on and I've got about six more jobs that I found that I think he will like. So when I talk to him again, I'll be able to really walk through those different things that I've picked out. And I think that's going to help him kind of narrow down what he's actually looking for. But that came from, you know, the, the conversation and that action of working with him and talking with him and Mm -hmm. showing him and then even you know yeah yesterday with the whole job board part of it it's Mm -hmm. like I don't always know what someone doesn't know so 
I learned while I was doing that too, because there's yeah. changes are happening all the time. There's technology upgrades like Zoom, you said, you're like mm -hmm. there's all kinds of different things get added all the time. So we're constantly learning something new, even on the same platforms we've used forever. Yep. No, exactly right. I think same thing. We did a whole Indeed tutorial for one of our new students, right? You were training on that. And I talked to another um, recruiter this morning who had a very different experience with Indeed, you know, with as far as the fees and it changes constantly. And I think the algorithm. So I guess the point being is since you don't have to go it alone and usually I think we're, when we're doing that alone, like if these, um, uh, the executives that we're helping right now find another job, if they were at home alone on their laptop, trying to figure out these little things, not only would they not know how to quickly do it and, you know, um, just to get the effect they need quickly, you know, it would take them hours and then they would just feel so discouraged. And then it's like a chore. And that's why job hunts take so long. It's not, it's not fun, right? It's tedious. You feel like you're failing that you all know if the apply is going through like the good question he asked, if I hit apply, are they sending my resume or is it just the LinkedIn? And, you know, the average candidate wouldn't know that, but a recruiter can tell you, you know, this is what happens, but then you know, this is how we're going to help you the more behind the scenes. We know the other talent acquisition directors. We've been doing this for 20 some years, you know? And so I think there's a so much benefit in them just understanding, like, oh, this is how it's done. And then if you don't hear back, this is why don't take a personal, you know, it's right. really holding their hands. Um, and even for them to understand, like with the homework, have you noticed this past couple of weeks? Um, I think I'm thinking of our, I won't give last names, but our client, Tracy, Tom, Steve, and friend, other one. They all don't do their homework, right? <laughs> <laughs> we do our homework for we do our homework for them. We tell you, okay, you just show up. If we're doing the homework, we put the work in, you're paying us, hit the apply. And it usually takes them a couple of weeks to really be confident enough to even hit apply in the first one. Yeah. And then they get going. Same with the resume. It's like, ah, it, it takes a little time to get like anything in life to get acclimated. So there's um, you know, so moving into the whole career coaching where you got started in these recruiter roundtables, it really has been such a service that I think they've seen, you know, not even halfway through the process with it. It's a 10 week plan and they're not even five weeks, four or five weeks. Right. And I think mm -hmm. the benefits they've really spoken to, have they not? Oh gosh. Yeah, they definitely have. There's been each, each time that we've met with each of these individuals, something bigger develops from like leading from the last time that we spoke. I mean, it's Tracy for one too. I mean, he's come so far in just what he's looking for, what he's currently doing. And then, you know, even like the structure of his resume to the types of jobs that, you know, I, I put like five on there and he was like, oh yeah, that one actually looks good. And it was just because when I had his resume in front of me and I was actually looking at all the different pieces and parts of his background, I was like, oh, well I can put that keyword in and let me pull that up. And then I was able to find those links and share it with him. And now he's like, okay. And then his resume was like, I don't think everybody really realizes on their resume is like, you know, he had a lot of information, but even the format and structure of it, you know, mm -hmm. even bulleting it out because when it's all paragraph form, it doesn't always like capture the eye. It can get very lost. Keywords get lost. Mm -hmm. So if you're really highlighting the key pieces of somebody's resume and they can even then say, Oh, it, it looks cleaner. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's easier to read. It becomes more of like a book, a real story. Right, right, exactly. And it takes a lot more time to, you know, make it cleaner and put less than more. Mm -hmm. Right, like yeah. there was a saying out there saying, "If I would have more time, I would make this like more concise." Like, yeah, you might be like, you know, three pages, and you get it to one page or two, and even the spacing right mm -hmm. in between like the paragraphs instead of a paragraph have the bullets and yep. it is such like something we've known for years being a recruiter but candidates don't know that unless they have a good coach you know a recruiter guiding them to do that and most recruiters don't have time to actually spend the time like what you're doing with the resume workshops or then the LinkedIn workshops or practicing interviews for their video interview which totally will differentiate them putting that link on their resume that's yep. something we haven't talked about recently but it's such a differentiator so yeah, you know, all of those things. You're right. I think it's just so cool how we can see in real time helping them even before the end game, even before, you know, that final job they decide to take. Um, and many of mine are already turning down other for women here, other positions, because they get the confidence where maybe when they're on their own, they're like, oh, maybe I'll take the first job that comes my way. But there's plenty of opportunity out there. You can wait and find the right job. Right. And um, yeah, so I think it um, just speaks to that really well. Yeah, definitely. Well, <clears throat> and you know, some of these other questions here, just to talk through those two, because it's like you talked about, um, you know, gifts and desires and purpose and whatnot. But then this next one <coughs> says, 
which desires drive you and which might derail you. So this is like, you know, focused on leadership and that's where, you know, coaches, coaches are leaders and we're helping a lot of the leader executives out there. So leaders fall from grace most often or who fall from grace most often mm -hmm. have a desire problem because they satisfy a short-term desire without considering the long-term consequences. So it's like what we're talking about here is like 30, 60, 90, the weeks it takes to get there because mm -hmm. you get diverted if something like, because you want, want it too quickly, you know? Mm -hmm. yeah. We create those blind spots around our desires as we rationalize what feels good to us. It's crucial for leaders to be very clear about what their values mean in practice action mm -hmm. transparency can be conflated with having no privacy honesty can be conflated with oversharing and inclusion can be conflated with consensus mm -hmm. um, and then it moves to what are your greatest gifts <laughs> We talk about your free gifts as in real gifts, but right. the greatest leaders have an uncanny ability to find the unrecognized gifts in their people. They see past what people think they are good at and find something instead that they are great at. Our fits sometimes, our gifts sometimes come from curious places, from mm -hmm. our grief, our flaws, and even our darkest moments. Leading with heart includes helping people see their own gifts and expand their sense of what they are capable love I love wow that. I love that but you'll have to um we'll have to like get that book link and put that in our having house as group for people because I would like to buy it on Amazon yeah. <laughs> you know because yeah. I love I love the fact that it talks about a lack of desire being a bad thing you have to have more desire because sometimes as women I know especially too we are very desirous of things you must feel guilty if you desire like maybe too much than what you should have right. but I always feel like if not being afraid to go after what you desire um, actually expands you then help more people, right? Your desires then help others. You're growing yourself and them. So that desire is necessary. It's a good thing. It's an expansion. So, you know, I remember in the past being scared of feeling greedy, like, oh, I'm so lucky and have all this. Why do I need to go after more of this? But every time it's only helped to better serve me, my family, expand our lives and then expand others back to the secret of if you want more life and give more, right? If I want to be a bigger woman myself in my own world and help my daughters help more women in the world, right? If I can help you make more money, I'm going to make more money. Like I have learned that secret, right? And that's like yep. a big secret too. And then believing it to be true, believe you can do it. But um, yeah, I love that. I love the whole, everything you said, the desire, it goes then to your values. Like, and then like I said, and then taking action on those values. Like you have your purpose, you understand it, you know that, you know, uh, profit, making profits off your purpose and that vision is a good thing for the world, especially as mm -hmm. women need more women that are wealthier, <laughs> helping yep. more women. It's the better world that way. And um, yeah, it's the action steps. And I think um, so many women, hopefully if they're watching us and this resonates with them, whatever their business, if they're starting a business or trying to add revenue to their business, if they're not hitting consistent whatever their revenue number is. I mean, hopefully at least 10K when we see it six figures and living in America as an educated woman, right? There's no reason not to. So if they're listening to this and they want that, if they have the desire, I think that's a good thing. Then don't feel bad about that or feel guilty or talk yourself out of it. Go for the desire. Have something can show you the path. I mean, it doesn't need to be you and I. They could listen to us and find a woman that's just a few steps ahead in whatever their dream business is, right? But um Hopefully that can help someone know to go after it and the action steps to take. Yep, definitely. And well, then to close that up a little bit of what is your purpose, <laughs> That's a big um, one. conversations around purpose are really about what impact we seek to have on the world. What am I or we here to do? Who am I or we here to serve? Conversations around purpose are perhaps the most important because while we have conversations about our needs, fears, desires, and gifts, if we don't have a clear sense of purpose, we don't have a place to put all that clarity and energy. Mm. Someone who is living without their critical needs being met is often not able to make space in their life for service to others, which is what finding your purpose is all about. So even in all these calls that I've had over the years, I can, I have had so many positive phone conversations with so 
many different candidates. And, you know, it's not just the cookie cutter, here's your behavioral interview questions that I'm asking you. It's just having a natural open conversation. People have shared things with me. I would have never believed that they should even have to, but they do. But then that, that helps you structure, you know, what your next step with them is and where they might, you know, fit best in the world and you can help to direct them and, you know, just be that confidant with them, Mm -hmm. you know? So, I mean, and I, I think I know my purpose. I mean, I, I feel pretty happy in life in general, you know, I've got my four kids. I've had this great career that I've really enjoyed. It's been purposeful for me. I've come different different ways through this journey and different in parts of the recruiting industry because there's lots mm-hmm. of different pockets in recruiting um, but this one here where I'm helping with the RPO but I'm also doing the career advisory and just the you know the different service offerings mm-hmm. that you can do for other people that just makes me feel so much more confident in myself and in my purpose of that I am a I have a servant's heart and that I'm helping Mm -hmm. others to, to see that, feel that, and then have it and maybe feel it in their own selves as Mm -hmm. well. Yep, absolutely. No, you definitely know your purpose. You're on point. I feel the same way. I feel blessed. I feel like a very straight arrow with the purpose. Mm -hmm. I think for any woman out there listening, like you don't know your purpose. The first thing you do is start helping someone else, you know, in some facet, and you'll start getting clear on that, right? That's always a trick. If you help someone else find their purpose or their, what they're looking to do, it's a nice little trick to find that. But um, yeah, no, I love it. And I think you really are, at the end of the day, recruiters, they do get to go deep into someone's background out of their job through moving people across the country sometimes, families involved. Mm-hmm. We're transforming people's lives. So I feel like, you know, I've never really said that that's strong. So you never, I'm not want to pat myself in the back or, you know, I think we're both humble people, but there's something to really saying, look, this is transforming people's lives. When they, we jump into a new career, that changes their whole family. When we help a woman start her business, that money inflow, that higher revenue is going to help her family. It's going to help the community, her freedom of time that your business gives you. We're like recruiters, we're virtual, you know, so it really does um, transform people's lives. I think, you know, can just own that a little more. And then, and that I think will be inspiring, like the whole impact thing. It's not all about profits. Profits are wonderful and they're good, right? Nothing to be, that's they're on purpose, right? Profitable, right. I think purpose, but the impact you make is right there too, right? So even if profits weren't there, the impact, the feelings, we get a feeling good. That's supposed to keep you healthier. You're going to live longer. You're on purpose. You know, you're yep. on point. So the money is like gravy. <laughs> yes. We all need it at different levels. Sometimes it's gravy. Other times it's like really needed, but you know, I need gravy on all of the things I eat. Like my mashed potatoes, <laughs> my turkey, my chicken gravy makes it all better. <laughs> or ice cream. This morning we're talking, your little girl was like ready for ice cream. It wasn't even like what, 10 o'clock yet. Yeah, I'm like, no. I'm down. Yep, she had cream. a big bowl of chocolate ice cream with some whipped cream on the side. <laughs> Oh yeah, whipped cream is, is a staple and chocolate in our household. You know, it, and wine, like you and I were saying too yep. for the moms. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> but well, excellent. Well, like once again, without any real focus, we kind of I think cover a lot that can hopefully help people. Most people watching this, it's already being, you know, in our group, Head Any Housewives. So if you want a live call with Melissa and I, that would be an action step. You can DM us. Um, part of doing anything in business or career is being a good hunter. So if you try to hunt us for a minute, you're going to find us, but it's the, um, we're not hard to find. Right. And I wonder, it's funny. I invite everyone into the zoom, um, room. Um, I know we have like our live call, but there is someone that's been waiting to be admitted. And I'm wondering, I was hoping to kind of see the questions and answer them, but should I admit someone and see if we would take a live question really quickly in the last two minutes? Yeah. Well, yeah. Who knows where this can go? The last time I did it, cause there were like, um, it was a guy's name I didn't recognize. And then, but this is Kathy. So um, if you're watching Kathy, uh, you're on live. I'm hey! going to warn you, Kathy, whoever you are coming on board. Kathy Leal. You know her? Yeah. Oh, yay. Yeah. And I was going to say, if she doesn't want on camera, that's fine. Because I know, fine, yeah. you know. And she can speak if she wants. If not, there's a chat box. If you see to your right, Kathy, I'm going to Zoom. You can write your questions. You don't even have to talk. You don't have to show up yet. Um, whatever question, or if you're just going to hang out with Wilson and I, we love that too. So yes. <laughs> maybe she has no questions. She doesn't even know she's on camera right now, but, um, <laughs> yeah, so I don't see anything coming in the chat. I'm going to type right here so she's aware, or you know what? She could actually be seeing this in Facebook and we don't even know. Like, yeah. I'm not even watching the Facebook live. <laughs> well, I did just look in there. I got it. A- yeah. And there were just people who were saying, hi, Lila says, hi, Lila. Sorry if uh, I say that wrong. Oh, yay. Team okay. At everyone. Um, and I think Kathy was 
All right. Well, thank you. Send love to all the ladies or whoever's on here watching. Hopefully this helped them today. I love the last one. People said, yep, that was helpful. Yep, that was helpful. That's all. It's just nice to hear that, right? Because we're all here. It's not just you and I talk to each other, though. We love doing that. We can talk all day. But hopefully our little chats at the two o'clock for Critter Roundtable are helping people in their careers and businesses. So let us know. Can you hear me now? Keep doing them. Yes. Yes. Can you you hear me now? (laughs) Yes. Yes. Welcome. can, Can you see me? I hope no. Not. No. <laughs> no. <laughs> no. Um, well, so I'm in my car. Um, I I need to start being better at looking specifically for the post from this group because I miss them until it, it, until after it's too late. So I was at the grocery store and saw when I got in my car that the, you guys were having this at two. So I didn't join until around, I don't know, 20 after, um, okay. but I am in my car. So I, I'm not going to turn on my video, but no, I was just listening. I, I think, you know, always really insightful. Um, nice to see you live. Um, both of you, because I've only ever talked to Melissa. Well, I actually did have a Facebook accident or FaceTime accidentally when I first met Melissa, but no, just wanted to join. Really appreciate what you guys are doing. And, um, I look forward to continuing to participate. Well, thank you. That really, I love that. Thank you for being brave enough to come on too and give us that. makes me feel good. That way, can we get off this call here at the end? It's just like, okay, excellent. Some, you know, we always have one person, right? And hopefully that'll grow. But thank you, Kathy. And then we'll try to, um, we'll always be on at 2 p.m. Eastern. I try to get the same week to week, just like we train people, right? So you get that habit formed. I try to put it in the um, Head Honey Housewives group, like the Zoom link. You know, it also goes live on Facebook. Mm -hmm. So You'll know that from that time. And then if you want more direct support, whatever you're going through, then of course you can privately DM and book a clarity call with myself, Melissa, or both of us and see uh, where you are, where you want to go, if that's what you're looking for. Awesome. Yeah. I had a call with Melissa, I think it was about a week or so ago. And that's when she introduced me basically to you. But I think we need to go where you are, where the palm trees yeah. are blowing. <laughs> <Yes>. <laughs> um, because right now I'm in about five inches of snow it snowed here today so. right there with you Kathy and, yeah well Philly right mm. yeah Philly that's where I'm yeah. from that's where I'm from originally so I'm just down here for the winter but I love I love a good snow too right so I told myself send me a picture oh, yeah, of gotta... one beautiful snow and then you know it's all good <laughs> yeah. I'll take a nice picture and video as soon as it's done so you can see what it looks like when it's all before it's trampled on <laughs> right exactly exactly <laughs> Well, thank you, ladies. It was so nice to meet you, Kathy. Thanks as always, Melissa. And then until next time, next week, right? right? Sounds good. You as well. All right, bye, ladies. Bye. You too. Bye. Bye. Bye.